Hey everybody, so I wanted to continue uh, giving y'all some feeding uh, video feedback. Uh, we'll start with Amy. Um, and so my two cents on this, like I think that these are, are looking pretty good in terms of the poses and they still got a lot of in-between stuff to do. Um, so I think this is a fidget where she goes to that and then back to her idol. Um, how to make that work, like I think your idol pose looks pretty good. Um, if I were going to say anything, maybe since she's up on this toe a little bit here, um, really, I've been logged into this for multiple days now, so I don't remember what I signed in with. Sure. There we go. So maybe since um, she's up on this toe right here, that what you would see is like this leg needing to support more of the weight. So you would shift her this way just a little bit. And then by doing that, you would probably get just a little bit more, um, that's, that's too much, a little bit more contrapposto here. And so her, her pose would be a little bit more like that. Just, just a little bit. I'm, I'm probably exaggerating too much there. And that's just because I don't think that she would put, she would distribute her weight evenly just because she's kind of up on this tiptoe. Um, so that's very subtle change. So the step over to here, um, I think that this is really just, you just have the two poses. I think this pose is, is good. Um, you may be able to angle that just a little bit more and get just a little bit more curve and that for some more attitude um but i don't think you have to push it too much just a little bit more um the thing i would look at is right now it just feels like those two key poses i think that there's there's some interesting stuff that you're going to see in this um and i think it's going to be lead and follow so for example what you're going to see is um she's going to lead with that foot so she's probably going to lean over this way just a little bit and reach with that foot and that foot's going to get to its destination first and then she's going to the rest of her body is going to kind of follow through and I, I would imagine there would be a little bit of this angle in the uh, the spine right as she follows through and then the or as she drags over and then the follow-through would be that it, it reverses after that right not not that much but you, you get the idea um, the little look around, I think, if that's a look around, I think you need a little bit more time for it. And probably what I would have her do is, as she's shifting over to here, have her look in this direction. And then kind of hold that pose for a little while, and then have her look over in this direction. And you'll want to get a little bit of rotation out of her torso when she does that. So, And then, of course, to come back over she's going to have to push with this foot and lead with her upper body. So the transition, like it's kind of a simple little animation that has a lot of physics going on in it. Um, I like this, I like this pose better. I would probably get just a little bit more curve in her back if you can. Um, and like right now the the idle up in the air sort of ping-ponging a little bit too much but that's just because I think you just have two poses in there to keep it going um, the landing I think you need a contact on it so pretty like a straight legged like, contact that then goes to the the bent pose and um, so then we get this run I think this runs actually looking pretty good I mean, it needs some loosening up, and I think that there's a... So if you look at it as you go from side to side here, like where her head is when she's over on this side versus where it is over here, feels a little bit more... I guess it was more on the up. It? It's like that's where she is on the, um, on the up here. And then as it goes over here, her head pops over to there. So I have a feeling what your curve looks like probably on this control or this control is you have um, it's, it's either like kind of shallow on one side and then really deep on the other or vice versa like um, 
like maybe it's shallow like this and then really deep on the other. Now they just need to kind of even those out a little bit so it's it's making more of a, a, a regular pattern through it. Um, but otherwise I think that runs looking that runs off to a good start. It's just polished stuff. Maybe loosen up the arms just a little bit, arms and hands particularly. The hands still feel like they're kind of in the, the standard pose. And so even if she would have her fingers straight, I would still, it just feels a little too default. So these are, are looking good for where they're at. Um, I feel like that punch needs to, that first punch needs to be just a little, like exaggerate that pose just a little more in contrast to like two frames before it. Like right here, I feel like this is your anticipation up. Maybe exaggerate that a little bit more with her arm. So maybe you would pull her, this arm here on this, in this angle here, you would pull it up to like here, like back behind her head a little bit. And that way, as you step forward to here, you can sort of pop that. And so you need to make sure you really extend that arm as straight as you can, get that clear, maybe push that clavicle forward just a little bit. Um, and maybe tuck this elbow down here just a little bit more. Um, just so you get like this, like everything kind of leading your eye in that direction. Um, and so it's very noticeable. But I think the important part is that the pose right before it needs to be a little more favoring the earlier poses so a little more favoring this right so I kind of just like if you look at your spacing on each of these it's that that let's go ahead and look at all of these and if I turn on my ghosting oh turn on my ghosting uh, we'll make that there we go. So you can kind of see the the spacing of these. It's kind of small and then a big pop. And I think you need the opposite. I think you need it all to be kind of back here. So it's like four, right? And sort of to ease in and then a big pop. Like that biggest spacing should be right there on your last frame. Um, and it's going to get a, a much more um, much more energy to that impact. Sort of the same here. Um, I'm gonna step back a few frames. Oh, so that's good. I'm just frame by framing through them. Okay, still first punch. Okay, there we go. Second punch. So I think as she's coming through here, I would pull this shoulder back this way so she, her arm is way back here. Maybe even tuck it in more. So maybe, maybe a little more like this. And then as she comes in, you're still gonna be like, like if you look at her arms in comparison, like I think you're still gonna be way back here. Right? And that way you can get bigger spacing as she goes up to here. Right? So from there, so there you'd still kind of, oh, over there. From there you'd still kind of keep it back just a little bit. Um, just turn that off. And that way you get the bigger, more intense up. Um, push the clavicles in all of these. Like your clavicle should, should uh, be part of what's driving that. And like I think she would get more of a twist in her upper torso as she's moving forward that would drag this shoulder behind. That way she can flip it forward to get more impact at the end. There we go. Um, of course, once you get to animating, this leg is going to come out and like make contact first and then sink into that pose um, just to kind of catch her as she goes up. Second punch, first kick. Oh, that's much better. So again, I think you, you can increase the um, spacing on those three poses right there 
probably just by pulling her knee up a little I can exaggerate that a little bit more and then there like anything you can do to make the spacing of that last one like much straighter and so if you if you see that now it's got more impact on that right and then once you get to that I think you need to really kind of lean her back just a touch more on the just a little bit like just her head down back this way just to get this really clean line of action through here um, Um, I think there's some interesting stuff going on with the weight here because I think her foot needs to get down a little bit earlier to sort of catch her before, and then that foot has to be on the ground before her hips sort of start coming back up. So you see how her hips slowly start coming back up there. That means all of that is having to happen from this tiptoe um, that's pushing up. And so if you get both feet down there a little earlier, just maybe like a frame or two, and then push the hips up it will feel like that hip raise is happening from that force that she's pushing against the ground so this is you're going straight in to this kick here this one I think needs a little bit more work especially if you look here in this pose like she's she's going to be pulling this leg behind her, um, but I think that like you really need to sort of work on the line of action here a little bit more, because really this is doing the the same thing that the the punch was doing, the uppercut was doing earlier, is that she's using the torque of her hips, right? So she'll probably it, um, her her spine would twist forward. To get like that tension or her chest with and to get that tension in her spine so she could flip her leg around and use that that torque of her torso to get more impact on this kick and so right now i think the line of action isn't really showing that flow very well um of that maybe something like this right um and i don't think you're getting a lot of twist in this torso around this way so I think that's going to help. And then this impact feels, it feels kind of weak because of the, like, because of this, like this is her line of action. And I think it really needs to be more like this on the impact, like get her back there or, um, gone past that. Maybe it's, she's still leaning forward. It's just, she's got a lot of curve in her spine to do that. Right. Um, I, I don't know. There, there's something in that I, that's just a, a very uncomfortable looking line of action. Okay, same kick again. The crouch. Um, I think we talked about the crouch a little bit. I like I like this much better. Um, I think when she walks, like I would consider. Think, think about this from the from the crouch idle, right? Ideally, to walk like this, you wouldn't, like, it would be really hard to get this foot all the way out here in front of you, right? Um, but it's not that hard to get this foot to go up to, like, here, right? And so your walk could be this foot takes a small step forward to there, and then this foot takes a small step forward to there. Right, and so it's a little bit of a different cycle, and then you end up back in this pose again, right? Um, so it's kind of like, um, ho hopefully that makes sense, that your feet, this foot always stays behind, and this foot always stays in front. Um, but I think you could do something like that. It's going to feel a little bit more like a shuffle forward, but I think that that's going to function a little bit better. You could probably also turn her just a little bit to the side and make that a little easier to to maintain um, because right now as you see this like that step forward she's having to take like that just feels difficult to be able to do that she would have to really shift her weight from side to side a lot and I'm not saying not to do it that way but like that just seems like not the way you would do it so I mean this may be one of those things that you just need a little bit of extra reference 
um, to see like different ways people would would sneak around crouched like that. So cool. Um, this is a lot of work in here. Keep up the good work. Um, and I'm glad to see it functioning in the engine as well. And so awesome. Let's see who's next. So Tanner is next. gotten these out of order, have I? I feel like I remember. Hey everybody, so I wanted to go ahead and... That was my previous video. Let me see who I, I got through. Maybe I'm just remembering it from the previous times we we edited it. So we took Chris's. Okay, yeah, I think I'm just remembering from when I edited it with... um. The, the halfway through mark. So yeah, I think we're I think we're right here. So let's um sorry, I was just getting confused about what I'd already talked about. So I guess I'm also remembering when we talked about it in class. So um my notes here. Um so you see how he like kind of moves forward and lands like his hips and his toe kind of get to the ground at the same time there. So I think you need to lead with this foot. This foot needs to get down there and get planted. And that planted foot is part of what, I don't know how that's, that planted foot is part of what's going to let the character be able to lower his hips downward. Um, There we go. It's a little better. Um, so I think that's one of the things I would uh, I would work on is is getting that lead and follow. It feels like everything just kind of hits that pose at the same time, and kind of the same here. Everything hits that pose at the same time too, and then this push off. Um, it's like he his foot starts. Um, yeah, he starts leaving the ground before he's finished pushing off. So I think like this. This pose, maybe the whole character needs to be down just a little bit more, where this foot is still on the ground, and he's he's pushing off like this. Right. Um, the rest of it, I, I like this pose. I think you're getting a little bit too sharp of an angle on the hand there. Um, so you have to be kind of careful of what would break the wrists. Um, little things, like you could probably break up some of those fingers, but overall, that's this is a pretty cool pose. Um, um, so again, like little things with like lead and follow, like this frame right here, that foot is supporting a bunch of nothing while everything else is sort of falling forward. Um, I think his hips need to be back a little bit more, and then I think this foot needs to get out there to catch him just a little bit earlier, right? and that way you can sort of sink into that. Um, you see there, like he's like. Uh, he his hips start slowing down before there's actually something there contacting the ground to slow that procession downward or progression downward. So that's a good push off. Um, to me, it feels like there's there's something goes a little fast right there. So if you look at the spacing of the hips, sure, go there, there, there 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 oh, so I'm just gonna look at these to see how it progresses through no, actually this isn't this isn't showing off as very bad there we go we get a little bit of extra energy there where it like sort of surges forward kind of quickly there um, and so I think part of what's happening there is like the reason this would get closer together is because gravity is pulling down on them and making them slow down um, it, like watching it feels very fast right through there um, and I think maybe at that jump right there is just a touch too big of a jump considering how much it slows down there and so maybe this one should be up here or maybe there just needs to be another frame in there um, in between those two 
but then it slows down and I just assumed that was because gravity was getting there but there's really no reason for him to slow his forward progression down because he hasn't hit anything yet right really his arms would contact here and maybe that would slow him down I mean it slows his upward progression and that makes sense but it's side to side like what's what's slowing that um, and then on top of that what makes it speed up again right there right. so I think that that's that's one of the things when we talk about tracking arcs and timing and spacing that's where this gets difficult is that it kind of flies forward there into this pose but I don't really see where he got the momentum that carried his legs that far forward um, and I think what probably should happen is when he when he contacts the wall he should be leaning forward more to where his arms this is just getting messy to see um, so his like his arms are here and his body is still kind of hanging back this way and that way he could swing over to this now the other problem with this is he's he's swinging but his arms are bent so I'd also probably extend them out to where his arms are straight um, because right now like he, his arms are going his legs are going that far implying that the momentum was really hard but his arms are strong enough to keep themselves from straightening out and so like that that pose right there feels maybe a little better um i usually you won't hear me say this but i think you maybe have pushed the legs just a touch too far maybe bring them down to where it's like the feet are like more like here um, mainly just because I don't I don't see where that that side to side momentum is coming from. Now I like how it comes back through from from that, like from here to here. That feels pretty good. How he swings through, but then he kind of feels like he hits a hits a wall on that swing as well. Watch he swings through and then there, and then I think as he's coming back here. Coming back this way, his legs should be dragging behind a little bit more. Um, now, the, this is just challenging to make this happen. So, pulling up there, like, what extra burst of energy gets his elbows from there to there? Like, that's the part that is not feeling believable. Um, because, like, it's really, he's, like, doing this finger curl thing that gets him to there. So I think probably what you would see is to do that, it would probably be the other way around. He would probably tuck his elbows in to pull up with his forearms, right? And then he'd have to throw his elbows over. Um, again, I don't know what reference you're, you're getting this from, but you know, double check that and see if that's kind of what's happening there. Then you get the, like, this part here, like I think this feels like this leg goes straight just so it doesn't go through the wall. But that feels like it would break his hip. So I think that's just a little too straight. Maybe pull him back a little bit um, in this direction, like back over the wall, and just get that knee pointed more forward over there. But here's where it just like, he gets up on this knee, so now this is his base of support, and this, and that's easily supporting him, right? So this pose looks good. But over these next few poses, right there, like, that and that is holding his entire body up maybe that pinky um so like that just doesn't read as enough information to um to keep him up or enough force to keep him up off the ground and then it continues forward and then some of that stuff starts sliding so really all of this and then you get to here and that's his base of support all this weight up here would fall this way right um and the, he doesn't quite get that i i think i believe it may be there right that that maybe is feeling better although getting some weird stuff going on in the arm we, we could probably fix that um i like this pose like all this stuff leading up to it like little things like that foot Again, like if we're tracking his um, the spacing on his hips and his foot at the same time, like they both reach this like stopping keyframe at the same time, like they both are like settled right there. 
Um, and really that foot is what slows his hips down. The foot is pushing against the ground and that's driving that force back up his leg to slow this hip's momentum down as it moves across. So I think that's um, where that's not feeling like his, he's actually got any force there. I'll be honest, this one's one that maybe you, like this is a challenging piece. Um, I think I would try to simplify it the best you could. Um, so maybe, um, like maybe one of the issues is um, getting that, you know, I, I think probably one of the issues is in the rig, like pinning this knee to the ground in a way that is believable as your character stands up is really difficult. Um, and so maybe what you do is you simplify it from here, right? You get him to here and then think of this as a, a hop. Maybe he lowers himself down even more and then does a quick pull up and almost like launches himself up. Um, try to find some reference of people who climb up that wall like more in a like a double bound with their hands, right? Because um, really what you're wanting to do is get that foot up there and onto the ground. So maybe you get this foot up to here in this pose, which will be a really hard pose to hit. But if you could hit it um, and with this other leg sort of hanging down, then you could um, you could maybe sell that he's pushing himself up with that foot. So it seems like a little bit of a, a combination of a battle with the rig and a battle with uh, the reference. And right now the um, the rig just isn't making the weight believable. So um, all right, Robert, um, I'll open up Photoshop. this is going to come through in the video or not. Um, I may have to just turn off the audio there. Yeah. Okay. So, oh, I didn't mean that to do that. There we go. So my um, my thinking on this is that, um, like you're trying to do a lot, and really, like in terms of this class, um, it's not always a storytelling class. I think that this landing, and then the step forward, is like almost enough to make up the, the scope of the project. Um, you have a really interesting character here, and I think you got some great stuff happening here, like on this landing. He reaches out, it connects with this foot first. Oh. I'm trying to clone stamp it. Connects with that foot first, right? Um, and I think you maybe would, would pull this up and exaggerate this leg a little bit more as it comes down. Um, maybe shift the weight over that way just a little bit on that landing and get a little bit more like I don't know if that torso can bend sorry I'm gonna sneeze <coughs> excuse me um, I don't know if that torso can bend you know just something that'll get a little bit more um, dynamic on that landing I like the land and then this um, um, overlapping action that happens with the arms my problem is, like, because of a lot of your camera motion, we're missing a lot of interesting parts of the camera and looking at a lot of this empty space down here. So I would try to just move the camera less if you can. Because um, we get this drop, and I could, I could handle the drop, but I think I would just land with maybe looking a little higher up and pull the camera back just a little bit more. Um, but then we get this other camera pull up to here, 
and again like it's almost like there's a um like the camera goes looks up travels back and then it hits a wall here where this guy's just standing on a white background and then the camera travels up and looks down and then sort of travels forward and slowly looks down and like that just all over the place like I would just simplify the camera as much as you can um, I think because the camera is moving so much we're really not able to pay attention to the some of the cooler parts which to me is like like I I kind of miss this whole hand pose thing it does here that the guns slide out like I kind of miss that because because like um everything is moving at the same time and so you want to kind of draw attention to that so maybe simplify the camera and then have that like these parts come out a little bit later than that gun part happens um the walk forward like i'm not for sure if what you're going for there is that he's walking forward aiming or if he's walking forward shooting and if he's shooting those gun motions there of them sliding in and out those aren't reading because it's really just that part right there that's moving back and forth um and i'm not feeling it in the arms at all maybe like some recoil through that um i know it's um i know it can be like uh like you you may be thinking like to make that believable you would need effects and and that's true i guess but yeah i still have this one up um think of like i've seen some really good examples of people having effects without actually having effects right so for example if i just created this sphere scaled it up right uh channel box i turned off a bunch of the or turned down some of these faces right um scaled this down grabbed a few of these there move them up maybe move that one back down that was too close All right um flare that out like this isn't really um, anything that is useful as a uh, a shape, um, but I could very quickly um, you know, apply a new material to it, make it. orange right and then over the period of let's say 10 frame or two frames right I animate this let's do up to this point and then flat and then on the next one maybe I'll make it a little smaller too on the next one, I would make it invisible. And then at the beginning of this, just make it much smaller. Maybe and so we get that to that to that to that. And it's probably a little too much there, maybe I'll shift that one over and then on this one I make it invisible again All right now if you watch that I get like a little bit like that like this little like oh All right. maybe you can only see it over here very well Maybe I need to go back to zero to kind of show you what I'm talking about. It's on that one. I'll go ahead and key that. 
But then on this one, I want it to be on. And so now we get like just this really quick, right, like a like a little flash, right? Um, and then you add a couple more little like pieces to it, like maybe turn some stuff on and off. And we're we're faking effects is what we're doing at this point, right? Um, to get this like you know sort of fake explosion that would happen in those frames. Um, and so I don't know. I think that that's something that you could consider is um, doing that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close this. This is acting weird. Uh, doing something like that to um, get you some some effects in there that take you like less than a minute and just these little flash bangs that just turn the visibility on and off to make it clear that that's what's happening there right um and then like some recoil in the body i think would help too um the jets and stuff they're they're cool but like and they're part of the storytelling but i don't really like i don't know that they're Again, like it's kind of hard to tell what they're doing because when I first saw them, I thought that they were what he was shooting out of his gun, and so like there needs to be some some storytelling elements in there, but that's not really the the scope of this class. Um, I like this camera shake, uh, but I don't necessarily know why it's shaking because this little bit of gun movement here is getting lost in that. Um, and then this last little piece, I really like this jump back, but again, we kind of lose it in the camera motion, and like the camera is moving, but there's no ground and no texture, so like I can't tell if the camera's moving or the character is just sort of wobbling around, flying in space. And so a lot of it's context. Um, I I think that you're going for. Um, another storytelling piece and I think that that's cool but I think you're you're focusing on the story and um, and getting all of these shots where now we have an 18 second piece um, and at the expense of getting 18 seconds of animation you didn't really get to polish any of it and so my two senses is, is focusing a little bit more on just getting the polished version of this done um, the next one, Eli Lewis. Oh, yeah. That's looking a lot better. Um, so... I think that you you still have just a little bit of issues in the way he like kind of surges right there. Um, on mine, it's 35 to 36. He surges up, and then I like that you kind of get him um, a little bit of height and then let him catch. Um, I would probably do that a little bit more with the arm. Like I'll pull the arm. Wow. Uh, the arm back to here a little bit and then we could see it kind of over that to this next frame slap down and catch right um also you're getting like some sort of flat hand there so i think working a little bit on that um i think you need to push into this just a little bit more so get him in here really like this is his squash before his jump up right um and then over the next two frames really push off that a little bit harder right and then that that spacing from there to there should be one of the biggest um gaps in spacing like his hips should travel up a pretty big distance and then it should sort of slow and right now that big gap of spacing in his hips is right there and so you'll you'll kind of see what i'm saying if i put this on ghosting uh, we got hips hips Hips, hips, there, it's a big one. Um, hips. And so I, and then they just almost completely stop their upward momentum. So you get this, I probably should have drawn that more like dots, but 
um, but you kind of get the the point that there's a big gap from there to there and there. And you see that big gap that like, this one's more like that, this one's more like that. And so I think um, I think playing with that just a little bit. My only other issue, I think this camera moves a little fast. Again, try to think of what can a physical camera do. And so this is probably a drone shot. And so it, I, I would just sort of start it a little earlier and ease into this last shot right here instead of hitting it so hard. Um, lastly, I like this pose. I, I maybe would pull this hand on around the front there just so you're not bending. I, I'd like to be able to get that shoulder out there. And I'd like to see you sort of push his chest back just a little bit more because his line of action of his spine is kind of straight. So kind of push him up there a little bit more and, and feel more confident. Uh, right now it's where it's mainly happening in his neck and head. He just looks like he's looking up a little bit. And I think there's a little bit of a, um, a breakdown that needs to happen between here and him putting his hands on his hips because it kind of just looks like he like drags his hands up his legs and stops at his hips. And so I think you need like a, a point here where he kind of pulls his arms out a little bit more from his hips and then sort of then he, he puts them on them, right? Um, I think the run's looking... Pretty good. Um, I would play around with the arms just a little bit on that, that section. So from there, that looks good. Um, the arms are traveling okay. But when he hits this back pose right there, like his arm, the closest arm to us goes back and then stops and then sort of stays there. And I think that's a chance to get some overlapping action. Maybe not quite that far, but like as the like go ahead and start bringing that for or that upper arm forward and letting that elbow kind of break and start coming forward then um and i think that you're going to get like really you get some overlapping action on the forearm right there on, on both of them really but there's a couple spots where it doesn't seem like you do um little tiny things you get your your heel hitting there on the front but then it seems to take several frames before it goes flat. So usually your heel will go from, your toe will go from, usually your foot will go from up on the heel to flat again in about two frames. So um, overall, this is looking pretty pretty good though. Keep, uh, keep up the good work there. Okay, Carissa. Wait, is this? this? Yes. Um, there we go. So, um, again, just sort of um, the, th I think I, I gave you a lot of these notes at the, um, in, in class. Sorry, I was, I was closing down some, some files and the other. There we go. So I think I gave you a lot of these notes in class. I would probably stop it there, like where she sort of puts her hand over her chest um, and like give that just a little beat to act there. Um, the stepping over, uh, I think that there's a, it's like right through there, right, where we go from like what's supporting the character, like right there, I'm confident it's that foot supporting the character, right? But then from there to here, that foot starts moving even though that one's up off the air and that just sort of breaks the weight. Um, so even if it's just the toe supporting the character, also, like that's still kind of small, and like I feel like her her weight would be this way, just a little bit more. Um, and I think a lot of that is just keeping that foot pinned to the ground longer, in order for her to get that foot over. And like that's why she's being cautious in this pose, is because she's trying to get that foot over to um, to to get here and support herself before she releases any weight from that foot. And then it looks like the way you kind of have her do it is a tiny hop. And so a tiny hop is um, going to require her to kind of dip down just a little bit. And then her arc is, I mean, that's, that's too big of an uh, arc. But you're going to have a tiny 
little arc that happens after that, right? Um, for the for the jump. So she's gonna have to squat down just a little bit and then push off just to get a little bit of a hop. And it's gonna be small, but I think if that's what you're going for, that's what I would do. Um, if you're just going for the step, I would probably not have her go over the hole like that. Like I would probably have her. Like, more than likely, what she would do is lean back this way and reach with this leg to get it out there and get her hips over the hole while this one's... So she would have feet on both sides. That's a terrible drawing, but you get the idea. Um, and then she would sort of push herself across with this foot um, to the other side and push her body over to this side. All right. So I think that that's kind of the... Um, the parts that are are missing there is like it just feels like her, her torso kind of stays the same through all of this and it's like there's just some information missing somewhere between here and here that gets her across um, from there I think the other things I would note are um, mainly in the um the the spacing of the hips so like the hips kind of stay there in the forward and back motion until that foot gets on the ground and then they do a quick lunge forward and then they kind of hesitate here a little bit and then do another quick lunge forward and they completely stop there and do another lunge forward and that means that somewhere in your your forward and backward curve um, probably looks like like this almost right and instead I think you just need this sort of like there may be some hesitations here but it's probably going to be a little bit more like like that right so uh, so she's continually moving forward and not getting these like stops in that in the in the curve and uh, now when she comes to this stop um, that makes sense for her hips to stop, but again, like both of her feet are kind of moving right there, implying that neither one of them is off the ground, or neither one of them is on the ground. And uh, I'd be curious, like, the way she moves forward there, I'm wondering, you're not moving the, the placement controller thing that's on the ground, um, hopefully. Um, and so she'll like I like this pose here um, kind of maybe work on the neck just a little bit more there um, I like that and I like that she does more of a, a stumble to the ground than a fall but I think she needs to get that hand under her to catch herself um, a little bit earlier and so basically what's gonna happen is she starts to fall like here I think this is where um, maybe she would curl a little bit more forward and get this hand out there and catch herself. And that's going to require you to switch that to IK. Um, and then that hand and these feet are going to slow her down so she doesn't like, like slam on the ground. Um, as it is right now, like if, if you want her to fall back hard, I, I didn't get that impression, um, then her, her spacing gets smaller and smaller as she gets closer to the ground. And so that makes it feel like it slows down. If you, like, again, like with a bouncing ball, if you wanted that, if you want the ball to look like it hits the ground hard, you have a smaller spacing at the top and then a bigger spacing at the bottom. And then that spacing at the bottom being bigger makes that impact when it hits the ground. Um, and so that would be the same thing with her, um, her hip controller or her center of gravity controller. Um... Yeah, this would be one I would, I would be interested in, in like maybe sitting down with you with the, the Maya file and and, and helping you um, kind of figure out the areas to, to polish. And it feels like maybe there's some workflow uh, issues that are... Uh, it's very easy for a character to start feeling like there's just too much going on, especially as, a, as an animator, like as you're working, you all, you'll open up the graph editor and it'll just be a mess of curves. Uh, and like keyframes are everywhere and you're like I don't know what that keyframe is on and uh, and this uh, I've seen in the past people who are having similar issues getting stuff polished up that that's the the um, the situation and there and there are little techniques you could do to to clean that up and get you um, something that's a little easier to manage in terms of 
um, focus on it. Uh, one of the things that really seems to work really well this semester with people, and I've mentioned it a few times, is like just take those take this first 33 frames, right, to the point that she's getting ready to step over just those first 33 frames, and just focus on nothing but them. So if you if you go into Maya, you shrink down your timeline to where you're just looking at that. That's one second of animation. Um, and just focus on that. Don't worry about this giant piece ahead of you. Like just thinking about that part will let you stay a little bit more focused. So, all right. So um, next, I have uh, Jarrett, but I know you uploaded a revision. So let's go ahead and pull that up. Yeah, this looks pretty good. Um, I still feel like I... I so this is going to sound um, a little bit contradictory. Um, I think your character is supposed to seem kind of stiff in the way that... Um, like he's walking. Um, but for some reason in the arms, I want to see it um, loosened up just a little bit. And it's not that I want to see the arms feel like they're just dangly. It's more like I want to feel like um, that rotation is happening in a certain um, successive order. And so, for, for example, um, if your character is, I, I call it leading with the elbow. If your character has like their elbow pointed back, right, um, then as they start to bring their arm forward, what they're going to do is twist this upper arm and and start leading with the elbow right so the um, the next frame of that might look like let's get that ghosting on so I can see um, might still be that this is in the same spot but the elbow starts to move forward and um, and the wrist still feels like it stays there right and even if like a few frames later we get to the point to where um, the elbow is back behind again, but the wrist is here. Then what we get when we turn off this ghosting is this feel that the elbow sort of led that action. And I think you have that happening a little bit um, as the arms come forward here, but maybe like right there, sort of pulling that elbow forward just a little bit. So what happens is in the next few frames up to here, he flips his arm forward. I feel like that would help a little bit. Um, um, just one little thing I noticed right there. You kind of get some IK pop on the knee. Probably want to roll up on your heel a little bit more right there. Um... I think a little bit more overlapping action, maybe get that foot down just a frame earlier. Um, oh, maybe not. Um, I think that what's happening here is like, I would try one of two things. I would try getting this foot down a frame earlier, or maybe just like, it sort of seems like it eases in on um, those last two frames right there. So get that down just a little earlier, that way the hips can go down a frame later um, to feel like a response to it. Or um, it, it may be the other way around. Maybe your your hips are sort of traveling down and slapping. But um, So if so, that means you need to shift the weight over here just a little bit so when the hips come down, it's like they're coming down with this leg supporting it and he's stomping. And then after he stomps, his, his weight would shift over. And it's a really slight amount, but I think it would still be noticeable. Um, it's really, like, it's actually pretty solid like it is, though. Um, these are just little things that if you're looking to um, uh, improve it. I like that he hits very still right there, but I think he needs a little bit of an overshoot. So he needs to go from, like, there, and then on this, for, like, one frame, like 
push his head back just a little bit and push that hand in. So like you know, you put his push his head back just a touch and make that hand almost go into his forehead, and then it would bounce back on this next frame, and that's just going to give it a little bit of a, a, a rigid pop to it, right? It's um, it's the when you try to stop your arm too quickly. Um, it's going to overshoot by just a little bit and it's going to give like a little jitter to the stop and I think that that would help. Um, I think that your um, angle is better. I My two cents, I still think you can make those stomps just a little bit stompier and really where that's going to be is the the spacing as you come um, down on it right like right there you see how the spacing is getting smaller and like it may just be breaking that tangent a little bit on this IK of the foot so like my guess is like you're still like just a little bit at the bottom curving in right and just you know breaking that tangent to where it goes in like that just on the up and down like the translate Y and I th or I think just on the up and down it may also be on the forward and back um, I think that that's going to make it just a touch stompier. And then I think right here, um, like when he's up on one leg, I think you need to shift his weight just a touch more um, from side to side just to get it over uh, the supporting foot. So like right there, maybe over just a little bit more. You know, I would sort of just scale that curve up a little bit and see what happens. Um, and it may start feeling like he's shifting too much side to side. Um, if that's the case, I think you could also just push the feet a little closer together. Um, just like, again, this is really small like adjustments to make it read better. And I think at any point where you could make this, this fist not just be this side view, where you could turn it a little bit to where we could see the shape of it. In fact, that would be a little bit of a, a stronger silhouette. Um, So this is less of an animation thing and more of a, an option. Like he just got this huge chest, um, like this big, like, I mean, I know his name is, is uh, Beefy, but it's just a little too much at times and you're, you're still getting it to like kind of hide the chin. And I don't think I would change the animation. I think I would change the model. Um, so one of the things we could do, and we could just play with this, it's pretty non-destructive, is select that piece of mesh and then create a blend shape on it where we just sort of scale down his pecs a little bit to where he's not this, where, where he's not got this enormous chest that's blocking his chin and just sort of adjust that until you get it to the size that you want. And I think that would be fine if you wanted to try that. So um, overall though, this is looking much better. I, I really, I really like this. And uh, I think it's turning into a, a, a very solid piece uh, for your portfolio, so awesome. Um, we are on to Sean. Um, there we go. So this is 212. I saw what you had yesterday and it was looking pretty good. Yeah, it was looking a little bit better than this too. So I think, um, I think you probably already got the, the notes that, um, that I was saying on there. Um, it's looking much better in the hand grasp. Uh, I think the little things that I was noticing is, and if you like, kind of look at that right there, like that little hop, right? Especially if you're looking over here, right? Like this is a really interesting little study we could do because he has to, um, let's do it like this, right? So from there to the next frame, oh, uh, wrong button. To the next frame, right? Maybe a little bit more bend, right? And like you, you see, like the hips, the hips aren't really doing too much right now, but the foot kind of hops because he like pushes it up, right? And then after that, the hips drop because gravity's kicking in, and he starts to kind of catch himself, right? And the hips dropped even more. And so you can kind of see what happens there. Um, I think that's a really complex little piece of physics that's happening. Um, basically, he doesn't want to jump too high because he'll hurt himself, right? 
Um, he's just trying to jump his hip while still keeping his leg locked there, right? Or just jump his foot while still keeping his leg locked. So he's almost doing like this tiny jump underneath his hips and then catching his hips when they start to fall again. And like that's some really, um, which is different than kind of what you have it going on. He, you kind of have him doing a little bit more of an actual jump. Um, and so like it's it's got some it's got some neat stuff happening in there. Um, he does it again there, like really like he's his his foot his hips don't go up too terribly much. They go up a little bit right there. Right? And then when he catches himself right there, watch his upper body kind of follow through with that. Right? So there's a lot of really tiny physics stuff happening there that I think is gonna be a challenge in the polish process, but it's what's going to make this really read as um, clear. So I think there's that, and then the version you showed me earlier, it's little things like this step back of this character is like a little bit too straight, and he needs those like, if you have that like, if that's your arc, right, really what your arc should be is like these little bitty tiny waves that happen when you're taking those steps. Right. And so I think that that's the, the part that's kind of missing on it. But yeah, overall, I mean, another one you showed me earlier was was more complete. But I think that this is definitely coming along pretty good. Um, Charlie, I think you're the last one. Let's see what we got here. Oh, yeah. I remember this now. This is looking much better. Um, I think you got a really... Um, <laughs> This is, this is, um, it always sounds like I'm, I'm contradicting myself because sometimes animations are a little too, like, uh, poppy, like they, like, twitch a little bit too much, and sometimes they're a little bit too smooth. And I think yours are a little bit, yours is a little bit too smooth in a couple of spots where he's encountering some, some pieces of physics that would cause him to react. So, for example, like, um, he gets this point where he um, he hits the wall here. Like all of this transition here just feels really smooth on his hips, right? Like it's like he's traveling in a nice smooth arc. But he's encountering a new piece of a new force, right? This wall that pushes in this direction when he hits it. Um, and so I think you would see more of a um, uh, a, a hitch in that curve there. Um, I also think that because like he realizes he's going to have to run up this wall, I think that he would start to lean back there. I also think he'd probably get that foot up there as early as he can, so I'd maybe get that out there a touch earlier. But by the time he gets to here, I think that his upper body, like he would, it would be a little bit more like like this, right? He would be like leaning back, and since this foot's already pushed off, well, maybe maybe not that part. Um, so I think he'll be like leaning back because he realizes that his real trajectory isn't straight through that wall, right? It's this like curve up the wall and he's going to try to like change his angle to run up the wall. Um, so I think that needs to happen and you need to have a little bit more hit when he, when he contacts the wall there. Um, it's kind of like his hips and feet contact at the same time and really his feet would contact just a little bit earlier in order to keep him from running through the wall right like his, like what's what's slowing his forward momentum down here is his foot getting against that wall and redirecting him up and so then right here I think oh this looks pretty good maybe push this just a little bit more in the spine to curve his back a little bit more I like this, all this stuff through here um, really well. And then the last thing, um, this impact just feels a little soft to me. Like I would just really, I would stretch that leg out really straight and then get that crunch a little faster and get that foot down, just like get it to slam down over like one frame. And then that little hop feels the little hop feels good, but I think I would offset it just a little bit to where the feet stay connected to the ground and push the hips up. And then after the hips are up, then the feet kind of drag along behind it. And then they get to the landing point a frame or so early before the hips start, probably a frame early before the hips start to settle down. So it's really just some offsetting right through there and, and breaking some tangents and um, playing with the spacing in order to get that to, to hit a little harder. 
Um, but this is looking really good. Like this is uh, this is definitely better than the, the first pass you you turned in. The run works a lot better. Um, so yeah, um, keep hammering away at it. All right, it may have taken me forever, but that's class one, and I will be um, updating the grades very soon. So talk to you soon.